I kind of wanted to kind of end with one interesting uh, circuit that's going to relate to things we'll be doing in later chapters. And this is a very simple circuit. Uh, uh, we have to think about what it's going to do. Okay, so we've got a circuit here, got a switch. All right, and we have a resistor. We have a resistor. We have a capacitor. We have a resistor. We have a capacitor. Okay. And let's assume that all of the resistors are the same. Let's say that the uh, EMF here, the voltage is going to be 30 volts. And so the question is, when you first close the switch, what's the current? And after the switch has been closed a long time, what is the current? And this gives, uh, this, what this does for us is, it gives us the idea of transient behavior. So transient behavior is when a circuit behaves differently, uh, when you change things, than it does after it reached steady state, after things have settled, settled down. So we have transient current and steady state current. Okay, so the transient current is the initial current when you close the switch. So when you first close the switch, what happens? When you first close the switch, there's no charge on any of the capacitors. If there's no charge on the capacitor, then what happens? Well, that means that, that there's no voltage on the capacitor. And so that means that if there's no voltage on the capacitor, then uh, it's almost as if that capacitor is a wire. The, at the instant you close the switch, so you close the switch, and we got a resistor here, we got a resistor here, we got a resistor there, and what's going to happen is that capacitors are going to act like wires for a fraction of a second. Okay, so if these are wires right here, notice this is all one conductor here, okay, and so th that would be like the tops of these two resistors are connected together, and the bottom is, is uh, connected together, and so that means this is basically two resistors in parallel. Okay, now this wire right here connects off to the back end of the battery. So basically it's shorting out that. So that's being shorted out. So the current is going to follow the, the zero resistance here. We're assuming ideal resistance. And so that means that all that you see, the circuit, when you first close the switch, looks like that. So each of those is 100 ohms, so 100 ohms in parallel with 100 ohms. So that means the equivalent resistance is going to be 1 over 100 ohms plus 1 over 100 ohms to the minus 1. So in other words, that's equal to 50 ohms. And so the current, the initial current, is going to be 30 volts over 50 ohms. And so that comes out to be 0.6 amps. So there is our initial current. Okay, so the next question is, what about the steady state? So after a long time, what happens? After a long time, so this has been closed for a long time, now the capacitors have charge on them. So now they're fully charged. There's charges they're going to get. Okay. Now, the voltage is not going to be equal to this voltage down here. Okay. We'll talk about that in a second. But that voltage is not going to be equal to that. So what do we got here? Well, so we can call this capacitor 1, capacitor 2. Doesn't really matter what the capacitances are. Okay. But 
what happens is no current flows through them. So all the current, after they're charged, no current flows through them. So all the current flows that way. Well, that means the current is snaking through all those resistors. So it's like all three resistors are in series. So the equivalent resistance is going to be 300 ohms. And so the current is going to be 30 volts over 300 ohms. So 0.1 amps. Okay, so this is the steady state, 0.1 amps. Okay, and so, so that's going to be the, the total that we have there. So now the question is, well, what is the voltage on those capacitors right there? Okay. So what's the voltage in the capacitors? Remember, this is 30 volts right here. Well, the voltage on C1 is going to be the voltage between there and there. Well, it's an equal potential, so it's the same as there. So what's the voltage across those two resistors? Well, V equals IR. So if I is 0.1 amps, and R, that's 200 ohms right there, so that voltage is going to be... 20 volts. So that means V1 is 20 volts. So that's the voltage on that capacitor. What about the other capacitor? Well, it's going to be the voltage, the one in the capacitor connected there, the other end connected there. So that's, wait, C2 is also going to be the same way as with C1. So V2 is also going to be 20 volts. Okay. So, the initial voltage here is 30 volts. That capacitor has 20 volts. This capacitor has 20 volts. Okay, now think about what's happening. This capacitor has got the voltage between this point and that point. The other capacitor has between this point and that point. So that's why the 20 plus 20 do not add up to 30 because they're actually measuring in different spots. Okay, so there we have this idea of, of these, these capacitors right here. And this is the initial current, and this is the transient current. Okay.